Okay, so I've been trying out 64-bit Manjaro KDE on the Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig, and uh, I've been getting some really good performance, especially on the Dolphin emulator, which uh, I think is the best I've ever seen the Dolphin emulator running on a Pi. So you can see here what version I'm running. It's a Monkajaro version, which basically comes with loads of emulators, games, and all sorts of things. And I've covered it in a separate video, so I won't go through all the settings or anything. I really just wanted to show it running the Dolphin emulator because it, it's surprisingly good. So I'm overclocked to 2147. Uh, so if I go into my boot file and config.txt, you can see here that it's 2147 and 750 on the core frequency. What's weird about this is that I can get away with an overvoltage of six, whereas on Raspbian and a few other things, I've needed to go to uh, an overvoltage of eight on the eight gig Pi. But uh, in this case, I've left it and I've played it for ages and it hasn't given me any warnings, it hasn't crashed. Uh, the Dolphin emulator crashes, but I think that's probably just at the end of a game, it seems to want to wipe itself and, and start again. Anyway, so 7.7 .7 gig of RAM, let's see what happens. So I open the Dolphin emulator, I've got my 128 gig RetroPie stick in there, uh, and you can see there's some games here. Uh, I need to click on the bigger number, um, so let's start off with Hulk, which I was playing just now. And this is quite a cool game, I, I'd, I'd never played this before, and uh, it, it plays really well, it seems to be quite a decent speed. It's not stuttery on the on the animation and things like that, so that's quite impressive. And you can see from the menus they work quite snappy. Graphics look pr looks pretty decent on this, I think. And you can see from the speed, it seems to. I think it seems to run alright, you know. I did try and find what GameCube games ran uh, on low spec hardware. And this, obviously that explosion tended to slow things down a little bit. But uh, overall, I was really quite impressed. Pressing B and then Y will produce different moves. Oh yeah? and you get to fight tanks and all sorts of this. It, 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 it seems quite an impressive game. It's quite enjoyable. I like the sound of it and everything. And some of the special moves are very cool. Anyway, let's move on to something else. Ah, that, so it does seem to quit out. If you, if you try and go from one game to another, it seems to want to quit out. Uh, and I guess maybe that does refresh something. So, Rayman. So the audio is proper stuttery on this. Turn that down a little bit. What do I have to do? I didn't really read what I had to do. Oh, we're out. We're up and running. Cool, that was the longest in unskippable intro I think I've ever seen. Uh, so, yeah, you can see it is a bit slow. Oh, I can hover, can I? Yeah, I can hover down. Kick. It's nearly there, but it's not quite there speed-wise. So let's try something else. So Smuggler's Run. I would say this would probably be quite a difficult game to run with a big open 3D environment. All the menus are very quick and snappy. And you hear the sound sounds reasonable. Uncertainty in the former Soviet Union persists. With dissident groups... Sounds perfect on that bit. I get this weird sort of shakiness you can see. Oh no, it's not doing it now. So as you can see, it's pretty playable. Uh, so I've got to meet the red markers. I mean, it's not it's not ideal, obviously. Um, but uh, as 3D hardware support goes on, things like this would, would get a lot better. There you go. And it speeds up every now and then, so it, it does get a bit. You can see that look pretty fast, doesn't it? So, considering the quality of the graphics and everything, I think that runs pretty well. And it is it is somewhat playable. I'm 
I'm doing the level anyway, so... Well, there you go. So, let's try something else. So, what's the first one we come up with? So, Dave Mirror is one of my favourite games, and I have been playing this game on my Wii U, uh, the GameCube version of my Wii U, with a PS3 controller, and it's excellent, and, uh, and works really well. But, unfortunately, on the Pi, it's, it is that bit, well, it's that lot too slow. All the menus you can see I can whip through, which I'm definitely used to doing because I've played this game so much. These are very big 3D environments and it just doesn't cope with it very well at all. So I can do a few tricks and things. And also I'm on the analog stick, which I wouldn't choose to do on this. Oh, uh, But you can see it's just, it's just not fast enough for it to be enjoyable. Graphics look good, no glitches or anything like that, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's not enjoyable at this speed. Although you can pull off the odd trick. Let's go for the gap. Oh, oh, <laughs> no. Something, it depends how much the processor is being hammered by the game as to, as to how good the sound seems to be. Jerry McGrath, Supercross. I like a, a motorbike game. So the sound on the intro sounded all right. There you go. And I've got some weird steering issue. It doesn't want to steer right it only wants to steer left which can be a bit of a pain which is weird because the controller is definitely working for everything else yeah <laughs> only left so all i can do is go around in circles but you can see that it's it's not terrible from a, a speed point of view it's obviously not right but uh but it's not far off There we go. So, let's go back. So Tomb Raider, sounds good on the intro. Little bit of tearing there. Sound not bad on that intro. And here we are. So again, a little bit slow. Oh, a lot slow. It was a bit faster than this before. But you can get an idea of the game as it's loading in. So you can dive in the water. It looks pretty good, yeah. So, has some trouble with some of those effects. But, I was surprised that it would, would run as well as it did because of these big environments. And if I, if I get up and I look around, you can see that the environment moves around quite nicely. Under the water, look. Under the water, yeah, under the water. So not perfect, but not far off. And with certain things, it's faster than others. So when you're out of the water, it seems to run faster. What's down here? Yeah, see a nice big environment, and it copes, copes reasonably well with that. Look at that. The birds flying up above. Very impressive. Right, so I think it's the last game. Kelly Slater's Pro Surfer. So the video is definitely better than I last showed it before. Sound is good. Most uh, boats that are used for surf trips are just... You can see this bit, not much stutter in there, a bit of tearing, but pretty good. There we go. Now we're talking. Oh, that's a bit ambitious considering I just got up. Head back in, whip round. It's a really nice looking game and uh, and it does play well. And yes, there's a bit, it's a bit stuttery on the sound, but, uh, but yeah, again, I think impressive. Oh, nearly lost it there. Sloppy. That's nice. And head back in. Oh, could do with a better camera angle. Oh, crikey, I went far up. 
that's a bit too ambitious. Anyway, so I think coming along nicely, Monk has done a really good job of getting GameCube to run on this platform. Now, I'll just quickly show you Wii running on this, uh, just to show that it that it it works, but it's it's not playable. So Dave Mirror, but a different Dave Mirror. Uh, the Super Mario Brothers is incredibly slow, and the intro takes an age. The graphics look good. I think the sound was all right, but I'm not I'm not going to do it because it, it takes a really long time. But uh, I have got some Wii remotes, and uh, I did try and pair them, but uh, when I found that the game was so slow, I didn't bother to, to carry on with that. So I'm just using an Xbox controller. There you go. So you can see that the orientation is different on a Wii remote. So when you're configuring it, just bear that in mind. And it took me a couple of goes to get it to exactly the right way. Now, this definitely wasn't one of the better... Dave Mirror Games. Let's just go quick play. Audio stuttery again. But when we get decent 3D support, these these are all possibilities that this could be uh, worth playing and playing well on a Raspberry Pi 4. Now, I can't turn on this because turning would be the Wiimote. So all I'm going to do is just pedal towards the ramp and I, I, can, I can do tricks so I can spin around but I can't turn left and right which is not good if you've got big steel bars in front of you can I jump no because jump would be to flick the remote up anyway you can see uh, well let's just go just go back in there just a little bit it's not it's not really running that slow Let's do a little spin up here, see if, oh, no, wrong button. Yeah, as long as I keep it straight, I might <laughs> smash. Oh, no, I got through it. Uh, so let's see if any of the buttons do tricks. No, none of the buttons seem to do anything. But, uh, but yeah, reasonably smooth. It could be a whole lot worse. Oh, there was a trick. Anyway, so that was GameCube and Wii on a Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig and uh, coming along nicely. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.